When Dad's not here, we start at 10.06. 10.06. Yeah. For Rebels. That's, that's official. That's in the, that's in the Constitution. <laughs> when, when it's, in the, it's in the church Bible. It's in the Bible. <laughs> it's in the church Bible. It's in Hezekiah. The book of Hezekiah. Well, good morning. I was informed that when Pastor's not here, we start at 10.06, that's not 10.05. We voted on it a couple years ago. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how y'all doing this morning? Doing good. Nasty weather, but the sun is shining. Amen. All right, let's stand and worship the Lord this morning. I was lost in shame, could not get past my blame till he called my name. I'm so glad he changed me, darkness had me bound. He pulled me out and I'm no longer bound. I'm so glad he saved me, see I am a new creation in Christ. The old is gone, there's new life. I live by faith, not by sight. There is a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. Yes, it's mine. I met the author of my story, and he's mine. Yes, he's mine. Sin had left me blind, but Jesus opened my eyes. Now I see the light. I'm so glad he changed me. Now I'm walking free. I've got the victory. See, it's all over me. I'm so glad he saved me. See, I am a new creation in Christ. The old is gone, there's new life. I walk by faith, not by sight. Sing it with me. There is a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. Yes, it's mine. Met the author of my story, and he's mine. Yes, he's mine. There is a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. Yes, it's mine. I met the author of my story, and he's mine. Yeah, he's mine. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. There is a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. Yes, it's mine. I've been the author of my story, and he's mine. Yes, he's mine. There is a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. Yes, it's mine. I've been the author of my story, and he's mine. Yes, he's mine. Oh, he's mine. Yes, he's mine. And he's mine. Yes, he's mine. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad he's yours? 
this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. Everywhere I go, everywhere I'll be, oh, Jesus is mine. Come on, church, sing it with me now. Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. Everywhere, 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 everywhere I'll be, oh, Jesus is mine. Come on, one more time. Jesus is mine. Yes, he is, Jesus. Oh, Jesus is mine. Aren't you glad? I said, aren't you glad? Aren't you glad this morning, church? He's mine. Woo. Hallelujah. Woo, I'm glad he's mine. That was a little Pentecostal there just for a second. Were you the whole thing over again? <laughs> I, as Pentecostal, what? I'm telling you. I'm just saying, we started from the beginning, maybe. Oh, oh. <laughs> Brother Russ might not even have to preach. We might just have the Holy Ghost fall in this place. Do it again. Woo! <laughs> Praise the Lord. Tithes and offerings? Is that what we well, do? Yeah, well, I'm going to welcome everybody. Uh, <laughs> Pastor today. Robert will welcome everybody. I'm going to welcome everybody. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, <laughs> we do want to welcome everybody here. I'm glad y'all came this morning. I tell you, I think we just need to get used to everybody go invest in some rain gear, yes. uh, like rain jackets and rain boots, because it just seems like it rains every Sunday. Yeah. But y'all still came, and I'm glad to have y'all here this morning. We're glad to have y'all who didn't come and weather the rain joining us online. <laughs> but uh, we also want to see if there's anybody here, if it's your first time, if you feel comfortable to, if you'd like to slip up your hand, we'd like to welcome you this morning. Amen. Yeah, wanna, we want to welcome Miss Sherry Stevens and her grand boys are here with her this morning. Glad to have you. Good to have you here on the front row. Y'all used to always sit on the front row. Yeah. Over there though, right? Yeah, yes. yeah. It's good to have y'all here this morning. Yeah. That's all right. I like it. <laughs> um, I do want to share though, if you haven't heard, uh, my grandfather, dad's father, pa uh, brother Bill, he, uh, he passed away, went to be with the Lord Thursday afternoon. And hey, He's in a much, much better place. Yes, Amen. And I'm a little jealous of him. And uh, I know that uh, tomorrow is going to be, I'm certainly going to be tough. It's going to be a celebration of his life. But I know it's, it's never easy saying goodbye to a loved one, even one that's been struggling and suffering for a couple of years. But he's no longer suffering or struggling. That mind is as sharp as it ever was. And he is worshiping the Lord this morning. Amen. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get our ushers to come to the front. And we'll get our tithes and offerings done. Um, we have to make up those two minutes because, like I said, when Dad's not here, we start at 10.06. That's the rules. I want to mention, too, while they're coming, um, it is the fifth Sunday, and on the fifth Sunday, we try to have family worship Sunday. So, kids, this morning, you're going to be staying in for the service with your parents, and Brother Russ is preaching, so I know it's going to be, it's going to be good, I'm sure. It's not about dogs this time, is it? I hope. Oh, it's going to be short, you said? <laughs> well... I know everybody, young and older, in French Street this morning to hear Brother Russ preach. Amen. Amen. All right, well, let's go ahead and pray, and then we'll uh, bring our tithes and offerings. Lord, we just thank you so much, God, Lord, for another opportunity for us to be able to come together and to worship your name, God. And I pray that this morning, Lord, that in this service, your spirit will come and meet with us, Lord, and that we'll have an experience with you that will be life-changing, Lord. Lord, I just pray for, uh, for the tithes and offerings, Lord. I pray that you'll bless it. I pray for Brother Russ, Lord, that you'll just give him the word that you have for us to hear this morning, God, and that he will be the vessel to deliver it to us, Lord. We just ask this and we believe this in your name. Amen. Jesus is mine. Everywhere I go, everywhere I'll be, 
Oh, Jesus is mine. Come on, sing it again now. Jesus is mine. Yes, he is. Jesus is mine. Everywhere I go, everywhere I'll be. Oh, Jesus is mine. One more time, church, sing it now. Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine everywhere, everywhere, I go. everywhere, everywhere, I go. everywhere, everywhere, I go. everywhere, everywhere, oh, everywhere I go, everywhere I'll be, Jesus is mine. Why don't you lift your hands and thank Jesus. him that he's yours this morning? Thank you, Jesus.
poured out. Jesus, our affection, our devotion, poured out on the lay it down, lay it down. Jesus, our affection, our devotion, poured out on the feet of Jesus, our affection. Our devotion poured out on the feet of Jesus. We love you, Lord, I love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one, our, our hearts adore. so much, God, for this worship, Lord, and when I pray as we continue this morning, God, that you'll just continue to come and meet us in this place, Lord. We ask this in your precious name, amen. If you'd like to, you can have a seat right now. Um, this is kind of just going to be a special song. Um, this is a, is a, is a, double, a double, double whammy for me this morning because uh, this is Papa Bill's favorite song. He requested it a lot. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure, I'm not 100%, but I believe he, he said that he wanted this one at his funeral, which we'll be do, doing it tomorrow. Um, but I'm pretty sure the person he wanted to sing it was mom. And she always sang it, and she did a great job on it. And uh, I remember growing up, I think they sang it at every church we went to growing up. So I can, it's, a, it's, it's burned into my, into my brain exactly how mom sang it. And uh, so it's definitely a twofold song for me this morning special but beyond that it's an older song usually not my style but the words in this song are the second line I almost can't sing without just being reminded of what Christ did not for us not for the world but for me and if it was just for nobody it was for me the second line says though his eyes were on the crowd that day he looked ahead in time because when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. I'm not on an ego trip. I'm nothing on my own. I make mistakes, I often slip, just common flesh and bone, but I'll prove someday just what I say, I was born of a special kind, cause when he was on the cross, I was on his mind He knew me Yet he loved me He whose glory makes The heaven shine I'm so unworthy of 
of such mercy Cause when he was on the cross I was on his mind The look of love was on his face His head, blood was on that scarlet robe, now stained a crimson red. Though his eyes were on the crowd that day, he looked up. sacrifice that you made for us, God. Although none of us, none of us deserve it. The whole world didn't deserve it. And even if you died for the entire world, none of us deserved it. But Lord, you would have died for just me.
right, Brother Russ. Sorry I buttered the crowd up for you a little bit. You may have to break the ice with a joke or something. <laughs> My tissue. <laughs> yes. a little warm. Glory to God. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I want to start off by just praying, guys, that, uh, that you'll just help me. Um, the Holy Spirit will come to, uh, inside this temple and that I'll preach the words that are God's words and not my own and that God will fill this house with his spirit because of the words that he has for me today. And, uh, I just want to pray that God just anoint me today Amen. to bring the good word. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we ask, Lord God, that you just use this vessel, Father God. Lord, use this vessel, Lord, to pour out your word today, Lord. Lord, help me to, to give the good word, the good gospel, Father God. Lord, that the word that brings forth life, Lord, and fruit, Lord Jesus. Father, we ask that it just, Lord, just help me to anoint Lord, to just anoint me with the words to say today, Father God, that I bring honor to you, Lord God. I ask this in your holy, precious name, Father. Amen. And take away these nerves. You know, every time I'm up here, y'all going to hear the same thing, the exact same thing. I'm always going to be nervous. And praise God, you know, because I think if I got up here and I wasn't nervous, I'd be like something's going on, you know. Uh, but it's, I know that today what I have is, is uh, it's not of Russ, it's, it's directly of God. You know, I've put the uh, hands to the plow, and I've, you know, I've, I've been diligent in my studies, and, uh, you know, I've asked God to, to, to help me out and to choose the right word today to speak. And, uh, you know, the enemy is relentless. He comes in and he says, hey, man, you're just a dumb guy from down the road, you know, that graduated the bottom of his class. Um, you know, you're just, you're just an ignorant guy that grew up with an ignorant family and just, you're just never gonna be good enough, you know? But today I'm standing before you, adopted in Christ. Man, come on, bro. That's where, that's what we need to recognize today that that we're, we're not from an ignorant family. My father's a king in heaven, you know. And uh, come on, man. So it's awesome to think about those things. And that's what, that's what I keep, you know, uh, preaching to the, to the enemy. You know, when Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days and he was fasting, I'm sure he was so hungry that those rocks at one time looked like bread. And the enemy used that, you know. But he... he re he rebuked the enemy with the scriptures. And I said, oh, my Lord, Lord, use me in that way. Use me in that way. Amen. So while, while I was feeling kind of low and kind of, you know, nervous about what I was about to, to say and, and teach, you know, God, God catches you. And this is just something I wrote. I pulled over on the side of the road today on the way to church. And Tanya's like, what are you doing? <laughs> and I said, man, I'm going to try not to get in my feelings because... Robert just came over here and knocked it out of the park for his grandfather. And I was like, man, what a mighty man of God to leave such an awesome legacy. You know, Amen. Pastor Bobby, now you got Robert and Whitney. Man, you know, what a legacy is left, you know. And, uh, man, just, you know, that one day God will just, you know, maybe I'll leave the same legacy. You know, maybe that, that, that torch will be passed to me, you know, and I could pass it to my son. And, oh, uh, man. All right. <laughs> I'm going to try to get through this today. Um, but sometimes, you know, when you're feeling low and God shows himself to you in, in, in little ways. And, and you, you, may, you may know this and you may identify with it and say, yeah, yeah, brother, that's, that's what God does for me, you know. Sometimes he'll show, yourself, show himself to you. You ever been riding in your car before and you're just kind of having that moment and you're just kind of, like, man, I just, God, are you here? And all of a sudden, a song on the radio comes on 
that you hear that absolutely just rocks you to where you, are, you have to pull over sometimes and worship God. You have to pull over and weep because you can't drive anymore because the Spirit of God's inside that car. Man, praise God for those times, man. And I need them. You know, that, that's the times I search for. Yesterday, I was going to my friend's house and, you know, just kind of nervous and Tanya knows. I don't say a lot. You know, I'm just kind of, oh, man, tomorrow's coming. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> So I'm sitting there, and I'm at a red light, and it's extremely long red light, and I'm just kind of just like, all right. And then I, I'm, I hear the Word of God, and I look to the side like that, and they have a guy that's sitting on a sidewalk, and that dude is shucking the corn, bro. And if you don't know what shucking the corn is, it's just preaching the Word of God, preaching repentance, preaching just, man, just throw it throwing it out, man. And uh, he's got a microphone, and he has uh, the whole system set up, and he's just, he's just getting on it. And I look, and, and the Spirit of God fills me in the truck, and I'm like, man, I start like I'm, I'm fixing to be. <laughs> I start rejoicing. And I was like, man, this is phenomenal. You know, I am sweating bullets about tomorrow, but this guy's out here being reject, rejected by crowds of people that are passing. I'm sure he's getting called all kind of names, you know. You know the names. You know, you, you may have been associated with them. Anybody's ever been called a Jesus freak? You know, anybody's ever been called a holy roller? You know, man, if you've been walking it out for any amount of time, you can identify with that. And he was probably being called that, you know, and, and, and God was using that vessel, bro, to preach the gospel. And I was thinking, my Lord, if he has the boldness to get out on these streets and to preach the gospel like he was doing, I ought to be able to come in here today to people that I love, to people I know, and just tell you what God's put on my heart. Amen? Yeah. So I'm thinking, maybe I won't be so nervous. <laughs> So this morning, I wake up, man, I go into prayer, and I'm started praying, and I'm seeking God, and, and I said, let me text, because I, I teach a, a Bible study with my cousins that I've been praying for for years, I say 20 plus years, I've been praying, and God all of a sudden awakens them, and they're on fire for God. So I'm like, oh man, glory to God. They say, hey, let's do a Bible study. I said, okay, man, you know, man, if they're hungry, I'm, well, let's get it on. So we start doing Bible studies, you know, and I say, you know, I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask these, these mighty women of God um, to pray for me this morning because I, I want to get up here and present the gospel right. So the cousin that I'm, I'm talking about today is we grew up together. She's a, lo she's a little older than me. Um, you know, we've always been tight-knit family and all and uh just pray for her so much um and her family and all to to get saved and then when she finally comes to the bible study i'm thinking this chick's on fire for god this is crazy you know and i said well i'm gonna ask him to pray and i'm gonna have to read you this and i'm gonna get through it without crying and, and fussing <laughs> because i said hey you uh you guys pray for me this morning i'll be preaching and, and i need you know i need some prayer and uh, she says, I can't. <laughs> Tanya said I could. <laughs> All right. She says, you're going to preach like you never did before. It'll flow out of your mouth like a river. And everyone will be touched from there and feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. Because that's the way I feel when I'm with you. No worries, brother. You got this. Man. <laughs> I don't feel that way all the time. But I'm with her. She feels the presence of God too, you know. So I'm thinking, glory to God. This is a lady that I've been praying for for so long and I'm thinking, God, Sometimes you pray and you pray and you pray and you say, well, 
Where are the fruits, God? Where I'm weary from praying. I'm, I'm stuck. I don't know what else to pray. Just save them. I, I don't know, God. You know my heart. And man, all of a sudden they get saved and, and it's like, you can't believe it. Shame on me. <laughs> 20 years of praying and I can't believe it? I, I must be thrown off, man. <laughs> but they get saved and you know, it's, it's something phenomenal. And uh, this morning I just... It was three things that happened, you know, that encouraged me so much just to be here standing today. And uh, it was enough to make me pull on the side of the road and share it with you guys. And maybe it was for me. Maybe it was for you guys as well. You know, maybe God had to humble me, make me cry a little bit. You know, cause I'm like, man, Robert starts singing this song. And I'm thinking, Tanya said, you ain't going to make it today, huh? <laughs> Oh, glory to God. <laughs> All right. That wasn't the introduction, but that was just... <laughs> that was a little land. Yeah, just dig that one in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, uh, a few weeks le- uh, ago, Pastor asked me, he said, man, my dad's doing really bad, and, you know, I need you to, to have a message, you know. And, and I said, yeah, Pastor, no problem. You know, I said, I put one in the holster for you, you know. And, and God's always, you know, speaking to me, and I'm downloading... And uh, so when I started reading, I was reading in Genesis, actually. Um, and I just want to suggest to you guys, um, this is going to be a little plug, um, because I started reading the Bible chronologically this year. And we're reading it with a few few friends of ours, and Tanya and I is doing it. And um, so we're reading through Genesis and all. And, uh, you know, what it does for us is it strengthens us in our faith. Because um, when I can sit on the side of Tanya after we, we get through reading and uh, drink coffee and talk about what the Lord has told us and spoke to us through this, and uh, it's just it's, what it's doing is meshing us together. I'm not only speaking to her about it and getting sharpened with her, but I'm speaking to friends as well and getting sharpened by those friends, you know. So what's happening is, man, that... My sword is not only sharp on one side, it's sharp on the other side. (laughs) So what I'm saying is, for you guys, if you haven't done it, man, I encourage you to to get with somebody, get yoked up to them, start reading the Word of God with them. It's going to sharpen you, sharpen any two-edged sword, the Bible says. So that's going to be my little plug for that because that has been absolutely phenomenal in my life and I've able I've been able to to just glean the the blessings from that and just reap benefits for you know because of it I felt almost felt like I had to explain that because of Lizzie <laughs> it's green juice I'm drinking <laughs> so see like I told Lizzie the other day I was like, here, Lizzie, take a sip of it. She's like, oh. <laughs> So every time I see her, I'm like, here you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so I was reading in Genesis the other day, and I came across the story of Joseph. I need to get this closer on Elijah. I'm going to probably blow out the speakers when I do. But I was reading the story of Joseph, and uh, the more I read, man, I got convicted. Um, Joseph's life, man, was uh, incredible. It was uh, something that I, I thought, man, Lord, I don't want to go through that. Um, you know, and the more, the more I read and I started seeing how Joseph, uh, his life, he was, uh, he was ridiculed. He had false accusations on him. He had abandonment. And uh, yet he didn't, he didn't say a word about it. He didn't, he didn't do anything, you know. Um, can you guys identify with that? You know, I, I know. I can't. I can't. I, every time something happens to me, I'm going to tell you, I'm the squeaky wheel. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm the one like, oh, God, why is this happening to me, you know. And, and uh, you know, he had every right to be like that. And uh, he didn't know. Like, his testimony for me was that Joseph went through all of this and he did not say a single word about it. <clears throat> In Genesis 37, 3-4, it says that Israel loved Joseph 
more than all of his sons. And he made him a special coat. We all know, coat of many colors, right? So he made him a special coat. But in verse 4, it said, because of his father's love, his brothers hated him. And they could not speak peaceable about him. Like, they couldn't speak one single word. They couldn't say one thing about Joseph that, that was positive. You know, Joseph, uh, he, was, he was probably that model son, that model kid, that one that everything he touches is awesome, you know, and the brothers are like, wait a minute, you know, you got all of this favor, and we got to sit out there and work. You know, so they grumbled and mumbled against him the whole time. Joseph, he didn't say nothing. He, you know, of course, it was probably good for him. You know, he was probably, oh, yeah, you know, hey, man, I don't have to do these things, you know. So, basically, though Joseph, he was picked on as a kid all the way into his teens. He was, he was, he was, people were jealous about him. You know, they, they hammered him all the time. They, you know, they... I'm sure he felt bad, too, a lot of times. I'm sure he, he felt like, I wish I could go out in the field sometimes with my brothers and hang out. I miss him. I feel like I'm the only child out of 11 brothers. Now, who can identify to Joseph? You know, you ever, as a kid, were ever picked on? You know, where, even as an adult, man, sometimes as an adult, you know, we get picked on a lot, too. Um, you know, as a kid, I can identify, I... You know, we wasn't, I, I grew up in a, in a poor fisherman village, you know, that my dad didn't have a lot of money, and uh, I was always the, man, I tried so hard, <laughs> but I was the chubby kid that did not, was not good at sports. <laughs> I just, <laughs> throw like a girl, you know? <laughs> but I was that kid, you know, and I tried, man, I played football, and was pretty good because I was the, I was just a wall, man, <laughs> All right, stand here, boy. All right. <laughs> I was decent at football because <laughs> I was a chubby kid. <laughs> well, praise God. So, but I was always picked on too, you know, and, uh, and I was also, man, the stinky kid. <laughs> My dad was a fisherman, and he hunted, and he fished, and he hunted nutras and all of that good, smelly, delicious stuff. And when we were drying those nutrients, you had to scrape fat on the skin. Man, come on, Kevin. You wouldn't get no girlfriend that day. <laughs> you smell, man, I don't know if y'all ever smelled nutri fat before it dried up. Hey, I'm telling you right now, that ain't something you want. It, it, you'll always remember it. <laughs> I smell like catfish cheese, too. I don't know if you ever know. <laughs> I did not smell good as a kid, man. <laughs> My dad said, oh, it's just money you smell like. <laughs> uh, girls didn't see that like that. <laughs> I said, dog on it, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> so as a kid, I was picked on a lot. Uh, and what I did is I, I, I grumbled about it. I complained. I just didn't want to be the stinky kid, and I didn't want to be... I wanted to be better at sports, you know, but uh, I didn't put the time in. I didn't know Christ. And uh, so I just kind of grumbled and complained about it. I could identify, I could identify Joseph being picked on, but I can't identify being silent about it. It, it hurt too bad. You know, it was something I did not enjoy. Um, but Joseph, he, he did right in, in God's eyes. He never complained about any situation he was placed in or any ridicule or any false accusations that he came across. And, and, how, and how, do I, how do I know this? When I started reading through the scriptures, um, it said that, uh, that in Genesis 39, 2, it says that the Lord was with Joseph and he became a successful man. And the Lord had blessed Joseph because of the way he handled the situations without complaining. Um, man, I, I just, I, I know he didn't. His brothers casted him into a pit. And if you know the story of Joseph, I'm, I'm just going to highlight this whole story. 
And uh, he casted him into a pit, and they, were, they sat there, and the Bible says they, they just they ate after they did it. So what it was is that was, it showed, first of all, there was no remorse on their part that they really hated him that much. Second of all, it shows me that he didn't say a word about it because if you threw somebody in a pit, you throw me in a pit, let me tell you something, cuz you're gonna hear me for a long way. <laughs> so I'm be hollering, I'm gonna be mad about it, and I'm be, I'm be mad, <laughs> you're gonna hear me. You're not gonna be able to eat right there where that pit's at because I'm gonna be screaming so much. Your food is not gonna taste good. But they says, the Bible said there, they sat and ate. So I know he didn't say a word because those brothers would have, may, may have killed him or, or, or may have just, just, hey, man, whatever, dude, and, and walked away. I know one thing. The first, you know, uh, sight of somebody coming by, they hated him so much they sold him into slavery. Yet Joseph didn't say a word about it. What was... I was thinking throughout the Bible too. Was, can you think of anybody else that complained a lot in the Bible? I mean, there's a, there's a few, but there's like one group, one group that we can always think about, the Israelites, huh? Man, them jokers were probably, I'm probably an Israelite. I could be an Israelite. I am probably. I am a, <laughs> Lord, don't judge me like the Israelites. <laughs> Those jokers complained about everything. You know, every time they complained, you ever hear the squeaky wheel gets the grease? They complained to the Lord. Lord, we're starving. We're hungry. All right, I'm going to give you some manna to eat. Oh, we want some meat, too. You know, all right, I'm going to give you some dogs. You know, and he kind of listened to their complaining and tried to help them through it. And I thought, man, you know, that, that, that's, that's me. I'm just sitting there. A lot of times when I'm praying to God and you guys... Man, you're probably not there. I might be the only one. Lord teaching me today. You ever find yourself just belly aching in prayer? I mean, just I mean, just uh, <laughs> throw yourself on the ground and just start kicking your feet in the air and just you know, just belly aching, man. I found myself doing that, and it bothers me so much because that's the time when I should be, I should be honoring God. I should be thankful for the things I do have. I should be thankful for the meals that I am eating. You know, God gave me this job. God gave me this house. God gave me this automobile. God did all of these things. Because he gave me all of these things, I should be more grateful. I don't find myself doing that a lot of times. Because I'll get to my job and I'll say, it's raining that day. I don't feel like walking to my office. <laughs> Shame on me, man. <laughs> yeah. Because I look out there and them guys are out there working on iron and I'm like, it's raining. <laughs> so I am. I am complaining. I'm, I'm, I'm there. And, and this message, I'm telling you, every time I do a message, it is the Lord speaking to me and he's like, okay, I'm going to just... I'm going to hammer you on this so you can teach them what I taught you. So glory to God. I have been repenting. I have been asking God to forgive me for being such a nagging complainer. So they complained so much. It said the Lord heard their words in Deuteronomy 1. He said he heard their words and he was angered over it. Anybody got kids in here? A lot of y'all. They ever come to you and complain? Nah. Probably not. <laughs> well, mine do. <laughs> they complain all the <laughs> It's hot in the house. It's cold. We got spaghetti again. I'm like, come on. <laughs> Bruh, you, you dry today, ain't you? <laughs> So I'm sure that's how God's feel. Hey, hey, you out of Egypt, ain't you? I got you out of there. Man, come on. <laughs> oh, mercy. But God said to them, once they started complaining and just, just going, he said, listen, I'm going to send you out. Go look at the promised land. This is the land I'm going to give you. It's beautiful. Flowing milk and honey, man. Oh. They go out there and they send some guys. 
they come back and <laughs> I mean just giving it to him, you know. This land's full of giants. And it's muddy. <laughs> you know, they just just complaining their heads off, you know, except for two guys. They come in back and say, hey, hey, I already see mine. And look, we got to get this place. They got great stuff you head in here. And I got a big head. <laughs> Man, but you know, God got so angry with him. He said, not one of these men of this, this evil, he said, generation shall see the good land, the promised land. He said, when he said that, I said, uh oh, you know, I'm not a complaining guy. I don't, I, I, I want to see the promised land. I want, I want to finish well. I don't want to be that guy that when people come to you, you, they know you're going to just bellyache about something because people don't want to hear that, man. They want to hear positivity. They want to hear that, that everything's okay and that, that, Jesus, that Jesus actually loves them. I'd rather hear that than a lot of bellyaching, believe me. So I was looking through, I was like, all right, all right, I'm going to go through the Wikipedia. I'm going to see what's happening. And Wikipedia, uh, the anonyms, no, I'm going to go through the synonyms here because this is what rocked me. This is the, this is, um, the words that they give you for complaining. This is, you know, it's, a, it's the expression of grief, discontent, belly aching. Grumbling, griping, murmuring, moaning, whimpering, whining, screaming, squawking, grouching, <laughs> grouching and nagging. I'm guilty of almost all. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Man, my toes were hurting. When I was going through this study, I said, Lord, I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be asking a grouch. I don't want to be that nagging person. Lord, I, I'm so blessed to have you as my father. So I looked up the anonyms of it. And uh, I said, Lord, I need a positive side. So this is the opposite of what complaining is. It's appreciating, enjoying, praising. I said praising. Come on, man. Praising. Golly, man. Wow. If you're not praising, maybe you're complaining against him. That was a lot for me to swallow in that one shot right there. I don't want to be that Israelite. I want to make it to the promised land. I want to praise God. I want to go in there praising. I don't want to complain the whole time I'm walking in. Because he hates that, you remember? Mercy. I know David said in Psalms 34.1, he says, I will bless at all times I will bless him at all times. His praise shall continuously be in my mouth. And in the very last verse of Psalms, the very last one, in 15, in, in oh, Psalms 15, 6, that one, he says, let, every, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And in, in the last verse of 15, and I thought... I've been doing it wrong. I haven't been praising the Lord every time I breathe. You know, you know when I praise the Lord when I breathe? When I have an asthma attack. And I start freaking out and I start, because the more you have an asthma attack, it's, you can't breathe. You, you, you're trying to suck in and 
you can't. So you get enough air just to make you freak out because all anxiety kicks in then and says, hey, you can't really breathe at all now. So I'm freaking out and I'm pray I'm like, Lord, help me, help me. And I take my inhaler and I, I hit my inhaler and then I can start breathing and I, and I start praising God because now I noticed that I got breath. That's an involuntary thing we do daily. We don't thank God for the breath that we're breathing, right? Until you're laid up in bed, maybe with COVID. How many, brother Kevin, how many people you seen struggling with COVID, brother? You know, that should have been praising the Lord, man. Instead, some of them could have been complaining about it, you know. I mean, you don't realize that you need to praise the Lord until you ain't, you know, about breath until you ain't got none. If we only knew God's plan for our life, you know, we'd stop complaining. You know, we, no, we wouldn't stop. <laughs> because we're, we're Israelites. <laughs> we're not going to stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to do that. We may do it less, <laughs> you know, but we're, we're not going to stop. But if we knew God's plan for our life, you know, if we knew that, you know, because I'm going to go through some difficult times in my life that's going to require me to stand and just, and just trust him alone. But I'm thinking about you right now with cancer right now, brother. You got to trust God, huh? That's all you have right now, huh? You know, you, it's, it's easy to say, I got cancer, you know, and, and I got to go through chemo, and this is horrible, and complain about it. But what if you having cancer wins one of your family members to Christ? Would it be worth it then? Of course, man. You know, it's, it's the things that we, that, that come, and we say, God, why are we going through this situation Joseph had every right, man, to complain and bellyache and, and everything that he, you know, came against him, he, he should have. But he didn't. He just glorified God in everything. In Genesis uh, 39, 19, we're going back to Joseph. Joseph didn't complain when he went to Potiphar's house and his wife came against him and tried some foolishness. And Potiphar Ked said, hey, you dirty rascal, and sent him to prison. During that time, I didn't read Kevin Ware once. He griped about it or tried to even defend himself, brother. You know, he just, he took his, he just, okay, you know. And, and went to prison. But what did he do in prison? Did he lay down on the ground and kick his feet? Man, come on, he praised God. And I know... Because of what the scriptures say. <laughs> the scripture said in 47, he was in prison. He seen Pharaoh's officers, Baker and the wine taster. <laughs> I just read that. Why didn't I know that? <laughs> so those guys were sitting in there, you know, and they had a dream and, he, and they were like, it troubled a man. And he was in prison, and he, you know, he was, he was looking for opportunity. So he went up to those guys and said, man, why are you so downcast today? What's going on? Are you, are you all right today, basically, you know? Um, that's not something you're going to do in prison if you're complaining about things, right? Because he could have said, hey, scoot over, guys. Let me get right in the middle of this. You think you had it bad. Hey, I'm in here. I'm, in, I'm innocent. I'm just like the rest of y'all. I'm innocent. He could have said that, but he didn't. He, he, was, he was really concerned that he had seen them. Something was going on in their life, man. And because of that opportunity that, that he took during that low time in his life to be concerned, God was able to use that time. They said, look, we had a bad dream. It was, it was horrible, you know. And he, and he said, well, he said, my God can interpret that dream. And he interpreted that dream. And he did this. He did it for him, and uh, he said, just, just, just remember me. You know, when you get out of this prison, just remember me. And for two years, man, he sat in that prison, and he was thinking, well, didn't I tell that guy to remember me? <laughs> man, 
sure, I told him that. <laughs> but uh, he didn't until, until later. One of them was out, and he was, he was sitting with Pharaoh, and Pharaoh said, man, I had a horrible dream. Who could interpret it? Psst. That old boy says, oh, yeah. That nice dude in prison that time that interpret our dreams. I'm going to go tell him. And he did remember him two years later when the opportunity presented itself. So Joseph gets there and he interprets the dream, man, and, and it's, it's phenomenal. It's God's using Joseph even in his lowest time. Because why? I think he didn't complain about his situation. He just took whatever God set before him and walked it out. I'm sure each and every missionary, each and every persecuted for Christ, um, Fox's Book of Martyrs, each and every one of those that were martyred for Christ thought the same thing, Lord, what is going on here? And they were martyred for God. And I'm sure they had every right to complain, what did I do? I'm just standing up for the person I love. I'm telling you because I love you, but you want to kill me. I see Joseph as that type of Christ, that, uh, that type of Jesus that, that we should all reflect, calling ourselves Christians. And I've always said this, and I'm going to say this numerous amounts of time because it, it's, it's for me. To associate ourselves with Christ, to be Christians, means to associate. So the first letters in Christian is Christ. So we're, if you're going to call yourself a Christian, you best believe you better act like one. Because there, that's a, that's a willy-nilly word now. That's a word that's used so flippantly now that when you hear Christian, it makes, you kind of like, it makes the world kind of, hey, I've seen a dozen of these guys come through. I'm, the, I, I'm, I'm just as good as those guys. I'm doing the same thing they're doing. Mercy, man, love. I want to read some scripture in Genesis. If I listen, I, like I said, I graduated at uh, t -t 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 -t. seventy-eight people in our class. I was, I held down seventy-six. <laughs> <laughs> to my, I held. Nobody got better than that. On the bottom side. <laughs> I was not the greatest student, and today I pay for that. <laughs> so I'm going to read the scriptures to you. Be patient because the Lord's going to anoint this tongue, <laughs> and I'm going to flow out. It said in uh, Genesis 50:15, when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, it said, may it be that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for all the evil things that we did. So they sent a messenger to Joseph saying, our, our father has commanded before he died, say to Joseph, please forgive all their transgressions of your brothers and because of the evil they did. And now please forgive the transgressions of the servants of the, the God of your father. Joseph wept. It said, Joseph wept when they spoke to him. His brothers also came down and fell before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. I bet you, I bet you when they fell down before him and he said, Where were your servants? What do you think came through Joseph's mind? Whew, I want to just, just cry like a baby thinking about it because I know guess what, that vision went straight, that he was 17 years old when that vision happened. And all of a sudden, poof, he looked and he seen his brothers bow down before him. And he thought, oh, man, he wept. I'm a wept. I'm a wept. <laughs> I'm going to be like Joseph. I'm going to weep for that guy. But Joseph said to him, do not fear, for I'm the place of God. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring about that many people should be kept alive as you are today. I put this in the end of my notes, but I'm going to say it now. Anybody ever read James before? 
I just said the end, so I've got to go back. In James 1, verses 2 through 4, Count it all joys, my brother, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your, your faith produces faithfulness and steadfast, steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete and lacking nothing. I bet you Joseph could come up here right now and testify to that scripture, huh? Because you know what happened? He considered it joy that all the trials and tribulations that he went through, that when he was in that hole, just sitting there scared, and then when he got out and he went to prison scared, all of those things, he didn't find joy at that time. But it was joy in the morning. I brought joy in the morning. It was joy when he found out, Lord, you, you, used, you used me to fulfill your promise to my, to my ancestors. That, that he was going to make them just prosper and, 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 and his people and his descendants. It was going to be his people. Through, through my obedience and through my lack of complaining, you used me. My brother knew it. He, that scripture wasn't even that, that scripture wasn't even in the works yet. Oh, it was in the works, probably. Yeah, I guess Jesus. <laughs> it was in the works. <laughs> wasn't it works in him? He didn't know that, but it was in it was in him. Now he knows. He can come here today. He testify that scripture. I say that scripture a lot because I know that I want to be like Joseph. I want to be able to know what it is to consider it joy through every trial and tribulation. You know, there's a lot of things I went through in my life and now I look at and I'm thinking, ooh, Lord, praise God. You know, I was able to minister to people I would have never ministered to before, went inside their house and preached the gospel to them because my mom died. Man, did it hurt? Cool. It was, it was hard. But man, because of that opportunity, I was able to go and preach the gospel inside people's houses that I never reached before. And I thought, Lord, this is the joy you're talking about. Mm. All right, guys. Am I doing bad? <laughs> my conclusion. <laughs> this is my conclusion, guys. When we're in the will of God, we don't always understand why we go through difficult times. In John 15, 19, and 20, it said, if you, were, if you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you're not of the world, because I choose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the words I said to you as a servant is not as great as his master. If they persecute me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will, they will also keep yours. So yes, we're going to be persecuted. People's going to say things about us sometimes that we don't. That's not fair, God. It's not fair that, that I have to go through this. I have to bear burdens that that I have to drive the, the old busted up truck to work on every day to go to work. Or I, I'm the one that has to, to do all the hard work at work. Or I have to have the ones that, the, my kids are drug addicts. And what, it, you know, why, why God, you know? And all of these things we complain about, but man, God gave us kids to love. God gave us automobiles to get to church and go to work. You know, we sit there and we bellyache about spaghetti because it's not the kind that I'm used to. And weenie spaghetti, I'm going to tell you right now. I grew up on weenie spaghetti. I thought it was the steak of spaghetti <laughs> until I got out of my own. And I said, my Lord, my mama didn't, she had it a little wrong. <laughs> I might have complained a little bit about weenie spaghetti. <laughs> not now. I'd miss weenie spaghetti. Boy, I wish my mom would come cook me some weenie spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But we complain about a lot of things. We find ourselves in a situation in our lives that we just want to sit down like a child and throw ourselves on the ground and have a temper tantrum. I think that's the way God sees us a lot of times when we're complaining about things that are just frivolous, just useless, just so dumb. And he sees us as a child. And what, I'm going to tell you, I, I probably, Jesus might judge me for it. <laughs> I'll snatch his tail up sometimes. Elijah would just flip out. <laughs> I'd snatch him up and I'd say, get off of that floor. That joker passed out on me one time. And <laughs> Elijah, I'm going to tell on you. <laughs> he was, we was, all right, I done got off. <laughs> anyway, I might as well tell it now. We was in Blockbuster, you know, and like, all right, I'm going to try to get a good, good movie for him. You know, and I said, you guys, you know, Elijah was maybe five, Miriam seven. I said, you guys go pick out your movie. We're going to watch that movie tonight. So, man, I'm, I'm thinking in my mind, these jokers are in Disney, and they're looking at Disney movies, and this is going to be great, and we're going to sit down. <laughs> well, Elijah comes back, and he had a doll movie. But it was Chucky. That <laughs> joker. Oh, no, it's Chucky. I looked at I said, you ain't watching that movie. And I was like, you out your mind, bro. <laughs> so at five, you don't understand Chucky's not the, a doll. That joker flips out on the floor, bro. And just when Elijah would cry, he'd cry to passing out. And when that joker passed out, my blood pressure just, whoo. I <laughs> snatched him up, drunk his little limp body all the way to the door. <laughs> I was so mad. Lord, forgive me. <laughs> I probably... Lord, please. <laughs> he tested my patience that day, but, you know, he didn't know any better. He, he just knew that he wanted to watch a, a doll movie. But it, I don't even know why I did that. <laughs> Now everybody's going to know you like Chucky now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You old have to drag his big limp body down. <laughs> My daughter was like, he just turned off. I said, yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, he sure did. Uh, over here. <laughs> My Jesus, Lord, Lord. <laughs> I've been walking now for 30 years. He's got to do, he's, uh, one day I'm going to be sanctified. I'm going to get through. I'm, my pastor used to pray, Lord, to sanctify him, touch him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, I just don't want to be the, the whole just of the message that God brought to, uh, to today. And what God convicted me about, because I'm going to be real transparent, I am that guy. Um, I don't want to be. It's horrible to me. I just... I don't want to be that, that kid laying on the floor kicking and screaming, flailing, because everything's not my way. I want to be Joseph. I want to do God's will. I want to know that, that God's using this to further his kingdom. That because of my heartache and pain, God's using it to further his kingdom. And I want to know that I'm going to be a good steward, and I'm not going to flip out, and I'm not going to complain and I'm not going to be kicked out of the promised land because of my stupidity. Amen? So you guys today, I would like to tell you, because I'm in this pulpit, that I'm not going to complain again. But that would be nonsense. <laughs> but I know I'm going to complain a lot less because of it now. I'm going to think about what I say because I've complained about things that I shouldn't have. And that it may have affected others. And for that, I'm sorry, guys. I, I know better. I know now. Because of the study of the Word of God. So, I know now by, by also teaching this. If you hear me complaining, you're going to be on me now. <laughs> Praise God. I might need, I'm going to need it. <laughs> and you got my permission. <laughs> Glory to God. So uh, today we're going to wrap it up. Let's see if you want to come some, play some good old Pentecostal music, man. That's what I got saved on. Man. Old Pentecostal music blowed out. 
Man, just a blessing, man. We were talking about, even I were talking earlier, that uh, how blessed we are to have our families mesh together, you know, because of our, our kids' godliness. It is God's really honoring our kids through their faithfulness in him, you know, um, that we're able, we're going we're gonna to walk out the rest of life together, you know, now. We're going we're gonna to raise kids. Mercy. No. I do love me some Ethan Mike. <laughs> oh, we're blessed, man. And, uh, you know, because of that, man, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be awesome. You know, my son's going to be influenced by another godly family. And her daughter is going to be influenced by another godly family. Glory to God, man. That, that's phenomenal. You know, just to, to give props, I've seen her little hand come up back there. I'm so proud of her, man. She just passed her nursing exam. It's official. You're officially a nurse now, right? Official. Officially. You're there, bro. But if y'all go into cardiac arrest, call Leslie. <laughs> just, just for the first time. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, you guys, thank you so much. And uh, it was such an opportunity. And, and I just love you guys. And uh, amen. Amen. If you need prayer this morning, if our um, altar workers would come, um, keep remembering uh, just so many needs, and I know that they'll they'll go through it. But Pastor Bobby's family, um, Brother Bill was a good guy, and he will be missed. But like Mike, uh, like uh, Robert said, he's he's in a much much better place. Um, while we're praying, let's remember um, Trent Lesser. That's Michaela's boyfriend. Um, he's on a ventilator, and um, I, he, he's on a trach now. I'm reading old prayer requests, I guess. I wasn't here last week. We ministered at my dad's church last week, so um, so if he's still on a... Okay, yeah, I mean, he's still, he's still not breathing, I don't believe, completely on his... He has pneumonia. Okay, yeah, that's what this says. And, and fever and, and all of that. We need to remember that, that need. That is um, a young man. He's been in the house of God um, with Michaela, came here. And, um, you know, it, it's a really, really sad situation. You hear more and more of it these days. Um, but let's just believe God to completely heal him. Pray for Layla that the Lord will just completely clear up her lungs. Um, and Brother Wayne, this morning, I just... When I was singing up there and I, I got to thinking about you and we had our little conversation this morning. And it's like the Lord spoke to me and, and you know, I remember you saying, I'm glad I did the oxygen because I, you know, I'd been just out of breath for over a year now. But it's like the Lord said, I can heal him. You know, I mean, we, we think that people get in a state and, and we just, especially older people. You know, where it's like, well, that's just how they're going to live out the rest of their life. But, Brother Wayne, I began to pray this morning as I was singing. And I began to believe God for your complete healing. That you won't have to walk around with that. Will you join me in praying that, church? Because, you know, it, it may seem like a simple thing. And we're so grateful to have Miss Sarah and, and, and Mr. Wayne and, and be a part of our church. It's a vital part of our church. But you know what? It, it's, this is something that, that God can heal. And we have, to, we have to believe that. It may seem little to us, but that's got to be a pain to walk around with that attached to you all the time. And um, Layla had double pneumonia, and um, she's doing better. But let's just believe God that, she's gonna, that it's all going to clear up. You have a, anybody else have a prayer request while we're praying? Okay, Amanda's brother-in-law. So let's remember that family. It seems like it's around every corner. I know Pastor Bobby's preached so many funerals. Daddy preached one the other day, a saint of God in his church. So 94 years old, went to be with the Lord. She served the Lord for many, many years. And, 
And um, she was ready. She told Daddy every time she saw him, she was just, I mean, sharp as a tack. But she was ready. She, just, she knew it. And, and I know that Paw Paw Bill was like that, too. He was ready to go. And, um, but it's hard. It's hard for a family. And, and we have to believe. We have to know that and just trust that God's going to give them peace. Any other prayer requests? Who is this now? Oh, yeah. I, I always pray for my brother. My brother slaying the giant. I, I, I always, I keep up with everything on Facebook, and I'm always praying. I talked about you in, in, uh, last Sunday at Daddy's Church. I was, you know, talking about that. But, Brother Eugene, we just, we just going to keep slaying him. We just, one step at a time. Amen. Remember, Miss Joey, I know she's got that uh, issue with staff. Let's just pray for her and um, just believe God for a complete healing. Lots of needs. Amen. If I told Daddy's Church last Sunday, I said, Lord, if we, we get, went through all the needs and talked about them, we, you know, we'd be here for hours. But, um, but you know, Russ, Russ's message really hit home to me this morning because I am a complainer. I, I catch myself doing that a lot, especially... I know when Mike lost his job, most of you know he, he's, he's back to work now. He's working where Brother Kenny works um, for, for about a month. But, you know, I can't, can't dwell on that. I just have to believe that God's got everything lined up. And, he's got, and it, it would make me so mad because Mike would not get worried. Like, he just wouldn't worry. And, and, and it, it, would, it made me mad because I'm like, well, why aren't you worried? Like, if I'm going to worry, then so are you. But he just, he, he doesn't have that nature about him. And I said, well, it must be nice. It just must be nice not to worry. But you know what? God's proven himself in our 22 years of marriage. And he'll continue to prove himself because he's God. And that's just the way, that's just the way he works. And so um, I'm grateful for that. But, um, you know, they're, they're just, we just, we live in a world that's so unsure. But, you know, I, I sang that song, I Go to the Rock, and that's where we have to go to. We have to go to the rock. If you have a need this morning while we sing, if you want to come up, and these ladies and gentlemen will pray for you, and um, we're just going to believe God that he's going to move in your situation. And if you want to stand in for somebody, feel free to do that. Keep Emily in prayer. Emily was in an accident. Um, thank God she's okay. We, we do thank God for that. Um, the car was not, but she was. <laughs> and uh, as mothers, we're always grateful when our babies are okay. So, um, but I, you, Lolly used to sing the song, her and brother Dwayne. And so uh, Whitney had, and so if you have a need while we sing this, just feel free to come up. I've had many tears and sorrows, questions about tomorrow. There's been times I did no right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave blessed consolation that my trials only come to make me strong. Through it all, come on, you know it. trust in Jesus I've learned to trust in God through it all through it all I've learned to depend upon his word I love this word I thank God for the mountains I thank him for the valley Thank him for all the storms he's brought me through. For if I never had a problem, I didn't know that God could solve them. I never know what faith in God can do. Depend 
upon his word. How many of you can sing that this morning? Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon His Word. Father, we just thank you this morning, Lord, for the anointing, God. We thank you for your Word. Lord, let us not be complainers, but let us be praisers. God, let us learn to praise you in the middle of the storm, God. Lord, that the words that we speak, Father, would be words of edification and, and words that would be bring glory to you. God, help us to guard our tongues this morning. Lord, that when we speak, it's so easy to complain. It's so easy to talk about negative things. But Father, just guard our tongues that when we speak, that your love will shine through, that it will bring glory to you. Father, we pray for every need that was brought forth this morning. God, you knew the needs before we even asked or we even brought them to the church's attention. God, we are believing in a miracle, God, in, 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 these, in these, these days to come for Trent, God, that we, Lord, are believing, God, that 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 trach will be removed, Lord, and he'll start breathing on his own, that that pneumonia will be gone. Father, and that he will live to serve as a testimony. That's the most important thing. That when he lives, he will live to serve as a testimony for your healing power and your grace and your mercy and your love. Father, I pray that you be with the ready family, Lord, these next few days be with pastor bobby and and brother billy god as they lord do the service for their father lord i pray god that as the grandkids sing and and that you would just move by your spirit through that funeral home lord and that they would feel the peace that passeth all understanding lord be with our pastor god lord strengthen him for the days to come and Lord, we just thank you most of all, God, for, for sending your son to die so that we may live. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. I know we have some announcements. Yeah, you may be seated. Yes. Yeah, Miss Paula and Mr. Terry's son, Jeremy, y'all might have seen on Facebook. He's got diverticulitis, right? But it's yes. it's progressed, and he has already had one surgery, and they're prepping him for another. He might have to have three altogether, um, and he's out of work, and he's a young man. So please pray for that family, for Jeremy especially, um, right now as he's going through that. Um, prayer request. I, I'm not prayer request. Announcements. We have uh, the new February calendars out. February starts this coming week. Um, the next big event that we have on our calendar is the Super Bowl party, and that is uh, Sunday, February 12th. We're going to have um, a meal, finger foods, potluck, everybody brings something, game food, that's what we'll say. Um, and that starts at 4.30, Sunday, February 12th, and then um, the game's at 5.30, and it's going to all be in the new building. We're Starting to discuss what we're going to do for the halftime show. I, I'm, I said this Wednesday night, but jokingly, Dad said he was going to play his concert. during the <laughs> But I think we're going to have a devotion or something like that. Um, so that'll be good. So come, bring somebody with you. They can have football, food, and Jesus. Now, that's a good way. That's a good way to do it, right? So that's coming up. Also, um, the youth, I want to take the youth, and anybody really can go to um, a worship night at Bethany on February 19th. The Belonging Co. worship group is going to be there. It's February 19th, a Sunday night at 7 o'clock. The tickets are about $19 per person with all the fees and taxes and stuff. Uh, if you want me to get your ticket for you, let me know and give me your money, and I will order it. If you 
if you're not sure yet you want to go and you want to just buy your own tickets, you can do that. There, It's general admission, so um, let me know if you want to go. Teenagers, anybody, it'll be a good night. They're a really, a really good group, um, so it'll be a good night of worship, especially for some of us that lead worship. We need those nights <laughs> where we can just stand in the crowd and worship, so um, plan to go for that. And then... Um, Wednesday nights, we're starting back Cafe Brazil. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Starting this Wednesday night, we're going to have pulled pork. And the menu is on the calendar. I get a lot of texts on Wednesday night, what's the menu? So if you want to know what's coming up, there's the, of course, Miss Melinda sometimes deviates. If it's, it's something okay. on sale or something, she will. And that's okay. And Whitney, right. speaking of that, y'all. Can y'all just, I mean, how amazing is our breakfast in the mornings? I know as a worship team, we appreciate that. We appreciate Melinda and Chelsea. They work so hard in the mornings preparing breakfast. You know, those things, as, as they get overlooked. But I never want to overlook the people who work behind the scenes that really, really, really work. They're the ones that really work, right? We do the easy stuff up here. That's real work back there. And so... Thank you, ladies. We, we truly appreciate everything you guys do for the church. Yeah, and they do Wednesday nights, too, so yeah. we're really blessed to have them in our kitchen. And that's, you know, something that God's gifted them with. And maybe you're gifted in those areas, too, and want to get involved. So if you would like to get help, to help on Wednesday nights or on Sunday morning breakfast, we could always use extra hands. Yeah. So see Miss Melinda or Chelsea if you would like to get involved with that. Um, the men's conference is coming up in uh, about a month and a half. It's going to be March 30th through April 1st, I believe, right? 30 the second. It starts on a Friday, Friday night, Saturday night, or Saturday, and then Sunday. Uh, men's conference. And um, so go ahead, men, mark that on your calendar, and that'll be a really good time. Um, I believe that's all the announcements that I have. Am I missing anything? Well, you guys have an awesome week. God bless you. I, we appreciate your prayers. Dad did want me to say that. He appreciates you guys and your prayers and your support from here. We love you all. See you on Wednesday night. <laughs>